Uh, I think first we need to have a story. Yeah. Tata Nation story. Oh, look at that. Oh, shoot. Okay. Now I got my little book wet. I know. I know. I know. I know. Ha. Huh. Weird. Well, yeah, not a good thing. Uh, okay. Um, you ready? Taliban Nation story? <laughs> you sure? Positive? <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, okay, uh, okay, uh, this one is more like a statement and less like a story, okay? Indians believed, Indians believed that the rain had lasted for approximately one month, whereas the white men had concluded the event as a 40-day period. The Indian people got their prediction from the moon, which was their time source. That's pretty cool. It was believed that the result of the rain had formed the endless hills, valleys, and mountains to be seen. The rain ended off in streams, creeks, lakes, and rivers. The Taltan people who witnessed the incidents were those of whom were able to survive and re out of the reach of the great flood of water. Those who survived lived on the highest mountain peak that could possibly offer shelter. Their f ice mountain, interesting, yeah. Their food source was what they were able to carry with them, and if a dead animal or a carcass that had that was edible floated into their reach, that meant food. Then towards the end of the rain, the water began to lower to a level where the tops of the rocks came into sight. The, whole, the earth as a whole was drenched in mud that was very thick and trees were toppled down in masses. The Indian people accepted what... Ex, oh, you still got... You still got a cold! You still got a cold! You don't have to be sorry. You just cough, cough it out, cough it out. The Indian people accepted the happening as God's way of cleansing the earth of its debris, whatever polluted it, and this was meant for humanity itself also. Everything was a ruin after the flood had ceased. This meant people had to start off in a better way than the past that had brought disaster. Also mentioned during the story, there are these are the beliefs of Indians of why the flood occurred. Indians saw things through nature and during the early years, and yet this has caused a barrier between the Indians and the white people. This was also mentioned by Grandma Emma Brown. The Indian people felt since the white people's arrival, they have tried to impose their philosophy upon Indians, and this has been causing a lot of indifferences and partially corrupted their customs and cultures and the future generations. She believes that this is the main reason why the white man society and their teaching doesn't take an immediate effect on the majority of the Indian people and their children today. As told, those are thoughts by Grandma Emma Brown. That's pretty true. Yeah, you're right, eh? She knew, she knew what she was talking about, eh? <clears throat> She's a deeply thoughtful person. And why is it amazing?
Yeah, the old people knew exactly what they were talking about. Sure, yeah. Tell me more. What else do you think? Your dad? What, what, what made him good? What made old John Craig good? Yeah, yeah, he ran a business. He ran an outfitting business, hey? Well, she did have 15 kids. Your mom had 15 kids. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Yeah. That was kind of a half story, hey? Let's see if there's another one here. Let's see. Okay. Let's see this one. This one is called... This one doesn't really have a title. It doesn't, let me just tell the story to you, okay? Okay. One day, Siskiya Cho decided to help form the bird beak, and he wanted a long, beautiful beak for himself, so he disguised himself. Raven invented a very beautiful crown for himself made out of pitch, that gummy stuff that runs and hardens from tree sap. Hey? That's amazing. Siskiyo Cho entered the old Indian village along the river. Here there were a lot of people and he asked them if he could share their fire with them. And he asked them to build a fire to build a fire bigger. As the fire got bigger, it became immensely hot. The people warned him that his crown will start burning, but the but Siskiyacho kept dancing around the fire. Soon various other birds came to watch his performance. As his crown got hotter, it started blazing. The flames were very bright and high. When this happened, he flew. The other birds got excited and tried to get a piece of his beautiful crown. While doing so, the hot pitch burned and shortened their beaks. <laughs> Siskiyacho. It's pretty weird and pretty funny. You can almost see it. You can almost see them dancing around the fire and then their beaks burning off. He's so, that's so Taltan, eh? To be the braggiest. <laughs> I want to be, I want to have the uh, best beak ever. <laughs> yeah. That's my beak. Uh... Oh, it still keeps going. It's still... Siskiyo Cho threw the burning pitch crown off and grabbed a burning ember and flew and cried his victory. Ka ka. <laughs> he spread the burning embers among various peoples and places. This is the way he gave fire to people who needed it. Siskiyo Cho uh, always disguised, disguised himself. Finally, the Indian people got tired of his cleverness, and some people tried to get rid of him. The Indian people tried various methods, but Siskiyacho always escaped his death. One method was prepared by sharpening, sh by using sharpened nail-like objects or swords that were placed in his path when he was performing a dance, but he was too clever to be caught. He'd often step on them, but they would never pierce his feet. This is why Indian people began to believe he was a spirit with the power of God, whom the white men preached of. His victory cry was the caw, caw of the raven, and when he flew away, he became a raven. Told by Mrs. Emma Brown, Grandma Emma Brown. He's quite the lady. He's quite the lady. I know, eh? Oh, Benny. Oh, Benny. He was a nice guy, too. Yeah.
Yeah, it is a bit crazy. Mm. You can't change it, it's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, you had a nice mom. And you and your dad was a really nice man. <laughs> okay, you better look. And I better, um, I better, uh, try to do some other work. I love you too. I'll call you tonight, okay? I love you, my mom. Bye.